And greetings everyone thank you all for joining us today amen it's a blessing to be here and to be able to share with you those things that the Lord have laid on our hearts to share for today so if you have your Bibles let's go back to the sixth chapter of the book of Matthew and we're going to continue to talk about uh, our attitude towards prayer and what the Lord expects from us when we're praying and the way that we are supposed to pray and I believe that if the Lord have uh, spoken about prayer that we should look at it uh, because definitely there is a, a, a way that we are supposed to be in our prayer life and uh, we definitely have to do it the God's way and not just the way we deem it to be done alright so sixth chapter of the book of Matthew uh, let's start reading in verse 7 he says, But when ye pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Now, not only is that talking about vain repetitions, but he, let's look at the key, what he's saying there. Don't do as the heathens do. Now, he's not just talking about people who pray to other gods. This is like maybe something that you learned when you were growing up like things that you did you know based on what you thought like for instance many people think that when they pray every time they're praying they have to be on their knees that's not Bible now, now I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with being on your knees when you pray but that's not the only way God accepts prayer and so when he's talking about don't be as the heathens, he's not just talking about vain repetitions. He's talking about at one time you were a heathen before you gave your life to the Lord. And what was your way of thinking? You see that? And so you, you have to train, you have to train yourself up in the ways of God instead of doing it the way that you used to do it. It's not just about being on your knees or your posture. You see that? So look at what he says. But when you pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think they shall be heard for their much speaking. And so many people think they'll be heard for other reasons. If I get on my knees and pray, the Lord will hear me. Or if I just get flat on my face, you know, before the Lord, he'll hear me. And you can do all those things and he still not hear you. Now one thing for sure is you can't have sin in your life. The only prayer that God hears from a sinner is a prayer of repentance. You see that? That's, that's the only thing he wants to hear, that you're turning away from your sin. After that, then that opens the door. But if you got to repent every time you pray to him, there's something wrong. You haven't really repented, you see. And so he's saying, don't be like the heathens. Don't already have your mind made up about what formula you're going to use to get God to hear you you see that when I you know when we talk to our spouses we don't have to be in a certain posture to talk to them you see that we don't have to be in a certain posture to talk to them and the same thing is true It's really about having a relationship with who are, you know who you're married to and that's what God desires that's what causes him to hear you your relationship not your posture you see and people want to approach God sideways know that they have sin and so they come up with all kind of other things that they think they can do to get God to hear them and that's not that doesn't move God you crying and all that other all that other stuff that does not move God faith you see that speaking it in faith verse 8 says be not ye therefore like unto them for your father knoweth what things you have need of before you ask him so when you pray you're not praying out of desperation he's saying your father already know what you have need of so that way you don't have to pray like that's God's first time hearing it you don't have to pray in other words look at what he says your father knoweth what things ye have need of before you ask him so you don't have to pray like it's your, it's, it's the, like the Lord don't know about your situation you don't pray out of desperation as if God have to make up his mind to provide your need. 
You see that? And so many people, they think the more desperate I pray, the more God is going to hear me. I've seen people, you know, deacons in church slapping chairs when they pray and stomping when they... God's not moved by any of that. When my wife talked to me, she don't have to yell at me slapping chairs and all of that to get my attention. You see, and so God's not moved by all of the extra theatrics that people got going on when they pray. You see that? Just, just pray a simple prayer. And I'm telling you, I've prayed for people, and they don't feel like you've done anything if you just talk normal when you're praying. If you're not yelling, I've even heard preachers say, you got to yell at that devil. No, you don't have to yell at the devil when you're commanding him to come out. He, he knows English, and he's not hard of hearing. But people do that. Yell and all that. That devil, he knows. He's not deaf. You see that? That comes from folks not sure of their authority. Or, you know, that, like when parents have to yell at their children to get them to do what they want to do and throw fits. It's because they don't respect your authority. And they don't think, they don't think much of you until you're looking crazy at them. But you can get to a place with children, and you can train a child to obey your voice when you're whispering. You don't have to yell. And the only ones that have to yell are the people that's not sure of their authority. And definitely their children aren't, if they aren't. And so that, that, that's the way the devil is. Your authority is what he obeys, not your voice, not your yelling. You see that? So look at what Jesus says in verse 9. He says, after this manner... Therefore, pray ye. See, so after this manner. Now, this is what we call the model prayer. What has been called the model prayer. In other words, there are some things in this prayer that the Lord wants us to pay attention to. He says, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. He, Our Father which art in heaven. We know the devil isn't there. So, look at the first thing the Lord says, our Father. Now, believe it or not, everybody that's walking in this earth, God is not their Father. This, this is showing us that God hears the prayers of the righteous, those that have a right to call God our Father. Now, if you're still living in sin, you can't call God your Father. Jesus made it clear, if you're living in sin, the devil is your Father. And so, look at what he says. He's more specific afterwards. Our Father which art in heaven. You see that? And that's, that's so he's distinguishing the devil from God. Because the devil is a father as well. He has children as well. Now, that, that ought to be sobering to you and ought to wake you up to that. You see that? If you're still living in sin, the devil is your father. And so, therefore, when you're praying, you... You can't go to God in this model prayer. You have to repent first, you see. So our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. In other words, that word hallowed means it's like holy or set apart. Or something to be reverenced, in other words. Hallowed comes from the word hell. H-A-I-L. Like what we get our word from hallelujah. Or all praise to God. So that's basically another way of saying that. Hallelujah is the same thing as hallowed be thy name. Yah is God's name. Or uh, Jehovah. Yah, of course, is short for Jehovah or uh, Yahweh. You see that? So same thing. Praise be to your name is what really the Lord is saying here. All right? Thy kingdom come, you see, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. So thy kingdom come. What is he saying there? I've, you have accepted. Now this is supposed to be your attitude. You have accepted that his kingdom have come. In other words. To understand that. Let's keep reading. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. So what are you approaching God for? If his will is to be done. In other words. If you approach God. You have to understand that it is his will. For you to have heaven on earth, in other words. For you to have the benefits of, of heaven right here in this earth. What do I mean? In heaven, people aren't starving. 
in heaven. People aren't sick. So, in other words, what are you approaching God for? If you don't need something that he can provide and if you don't believe that he can provide her. That he can, and that he can provide. That he is a provider. We learn in the, in the book of Hebrews that those that come to God must first believe that he is. Period. And he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. In other words, you first have to believe that God is God. That he's capable of providing you with whatever your needs are. So, not only does he, does he have everything that you need, but that he's willing to give it to you. That he's a rewarder. You see that? So that's what it's talking about. Thy kingdom come. Come where? Right here. Right here in this earth, God's kingdom is established. How? In all of the believers that will accept it. You see that? Other than that, what's the use in praying to God? If you feel like God have limits, why pray to him? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. In earth as it is in heaven. Now that's talking about personally in your life as well. Personally in your life. Is God's will being done in your life? You see that? Verse 11 says, Give us this day our daily bread. In other words, the fact that you'll be willing to accept God's word and what he has to say to you. That's what the daily bread is. Not necessarily him preaching from this Bible, but also what he speaks to you. In other words, when you're praying, look at what the Lord is saying. You're praying to the Lord, okay? You're praying to God, inquiring of him about whatever. The idea is to be there and to wait for God to give you the word that you're waiting for. Give us this day our daily bread. In other words, something to live on. Something that's going to keep us strengthened. Why, think about it. Why do we eat? There are times when I get so busy doing other things, you know, as far as ministry and things like that, that sometimes I'll forget to eat. I, it just Eating just isn't on my mind. And the way that I know that I've forgotten to eat, the first thing that alarms me is I've gotten weak. Like I start feeling weaker. Like I don't have the same strength that I woke up with. And then I remember, oh, because I haven't eaten. And many believers, because they don't receive the daily word, they get weak, which is what helps them to fall into sin, to fall into temptation, because they have not received their daily word. Sometimes the daily word could be not just what we do this morning or, you know, you just getting in the word and reading the Bible. But sometimes it could be something straight from God. Look, when you go to work today, the devil's got a trap set for you. Don't fall for it. Remember what my word says about this and that. Sometimes that could be your daily word. And that is what gives you strength to overcome it. That is why we're told to watch and pray. You see that? So give us this day our daily bread. So if we have enough sense to eat daily for strength, we don't eat because we like to taste the food. That's a pleasure that God gives us. But the real reason for eating is to refuel ourselves, to strengthen our bodies. That's the purpose for eating. Food to you is the same thing as gas is to a car. It needs fuel to continue to go. And we have a lot of believers that stuck on side of the road because they ran out of gas. I'm talking about spiritual fuel or food. You see that? And you sure enough in bad shape if you're rejecting God's word. How, how, do you, how can you reject something that's meant to sustain your life, your spiritual life? You see that? And that's something that God wants us to understand. God gives us this word to help sustain us in whatever we may go through, whatever we may be tempted by. I'm telling you, the more you're in God's word, the more you're willing to receive that daily bread, the, the less of a chance the devil has of causing you to fall. 
It's just, you're just more watchful now. You're meditating on it, you know. And it don't have to be, it could just be one sentence that the Lord give you. But if you meditate on it, it'll help you through the day. You see? And if you're meditating on it, when the devil do approach you, you'll understand exactly what angle he's coming from, and you'll be able to say, uh-huh, devil. I'm telling you, you're better prepared when you're looking for the devil. And the reason why people get caught off guard is because they're not looking for him. You see that? Jesus told us to watch and pray. That should be our attitude in prayer. Lord, what do you have to tell me? Because listen, the Bible makes it clear, God warns us before we fall. And our attitude in prayer is, should be, Lord, I can't see within my own self everything that the devil has planned for me, but you see it, and I'm ready to receive what it is that you have to strengthen me during that time of temptation. During that time when the enemy tries to bring temptation, I'm ready to receive what it is that you have for me. Amen. If we would take on that attitude, I'm telling you, God would just speak some things to us that, that will help us and we will know just how important it is to receive that daily word and to have the attitude in prayer to be able to receive it. And not just, you know, just going down this long list of needs that we have, but to recognize our first need, which is a relationship with God and overcoming the devil. Not just, Lord, give me physical food. We, we get too busy concerned about this natural life. You see that? If you would take care of the spiritual side, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all of these things will be added unto you. If you seek the kingdom first, then all of these things will be added. Instead of seeking all of these things and just letting the kingdom side go to the wayside. You see that? That should be your attitude in prayer. Your spiritual walk with the Lord. The Bible says God knows what you have need of before you ask him. Therefore, you don't have to get on your knees begging him and going over it over and over again. It don't mean that we don't ask, but begging don't change his mind. You know, whatever it is that the need you have, begging don't move God. But I tell you what God honors and he, what he respects, if you are willing to pay attention to your spiritual life and your spiritual condition. You see that? If you'll do that, just like his word said, all of these other things will be added. Amen. We want to say thank you all for joining us today. We pray that something has been said that has been a blessing to you. And we pray that you will continue to listen into this broadcast. Have a blessed day.